but uh, I keep talking about how much I want to show the volume of what God has done in providing for us in an apartment a patio that's probably the size of most people's apartments or at least this patio is as big or I should say now that I look at it and I have added it up this apartment is bigger than some of the apartments I, or this patio is bigger than some of the apartments I've lived in <laughs> wow so to give kind of a demonstration of that because sometimes perspective you know you can't tell with camera angles and the way things work but God has given us the opportunity to kind of like spread out so that we would not be like oh I don't know what's that popular book The Prayer of Jabez that said oh Lord you know lift up my tent state tent tent poles and extend it outward that you know I might be increased and I don't know, you know, if you're into a prayer of Jabez, go for it. <laughs> I'm not. I kind of like being small. But God gave us this place where we could walk. I mean, I can walk around in this apartment like I was walking around in a house. It amazes me. But this porch is kind of what God has blessed us with in order to use for ministry and for growing things and for actually enjoying a lot of what we can now do by expanding from what we had all compressed in together and I'm just amazed by that and in wanting to show and tell people about what God has done in my life that's kind of why I do these things you know sometimes I want to say look at what God can do because a lot of times we limit what God wants to do in our lives by not stepping out by not going the extra mile by not looking and trying to seek out step by step those things that God wants for us. I know I moved around a lot, you know, in my lifetime and man, you know, I've I've been blessed everywhere I go. You know, sometimes they were a little challenging, you know, we we first came to Sacramento area and uh, we lived in one of the <laughs> worst crime ridden areas there is. And quite frankly, I'd go out and make peace quite a few times with some of the neighbors because they were beating each other up or getting ready to shoot each other. There were gunshots going on all the time. And matter of fact, after we left, somebody got killed across the street. And boy, we used to go to walk. We used to walk every night in the park right over where somebody got killed. And that doesn't make us afraid. We fully expected to be used there. We were. We were lights while we were there. And now God has brought us here. And it's like such a great overwhelming sense of peace that I just am amazed to walk with God and talk with Him today about the things He's blessed me with. So let me walk down here and show you how far this thing goes. Because I've already shown you kind of the square that the camera's in. But this is the part that I said I was going to kind of show you we're still, you know, making developments and when it's full of plants hanging down and they're just draped with just blessings and and blossoms and full of the joy of the Lord, then you'll see what it's like. But I want to give kind of a messed up view, you know, while we're still moving in, so you kind of get the idea that we all have our normal everyday work we do in order to make things and put things in order before the Lord so that we're not trying to be perfect people, but we have, as it were, challenges that we do. Because I have lots of things to work on. I'm always doing projects, you know, for sharing and caring and being there and talking to the Lord while I'm doing them and thinking of this Bible study and that study and doing this and doing that and the other thing. And it's kind of neat. So let me walk along with you and show you how far this thing goes because it's kind of like, I'm sure you probably won't be able to hear me as soon as I get far enough down here. But then again, if I wanted to yell, but I really don't want to, this floor that we're standing on is cement. It's amazing. It's a cement floor. That's metal. It's so cool. And we got all this room to expand this. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure you can't hear me, but if you can, then crank up the volume. There's a hummingbird feeder and a little wind chime. And this is where my wife sits in order to have a morning cigarette. <laughs> oh, I wasn't supposed to share that. Maybe you should turn the line back down so you don't hear that. And we even got like a little water cooler because my wife said 
she can't stand drinking tap water and that she feels like it's kind of like the baby has different issues and things. And we found that thing for like 10 bucks, I think. Well, you just can't go wrong when you go to used stores, you know. I kind of enjoy that part. God's blessed me that way, I guess, you know, to not be so high-minded and to not be so low-minded that either way I forget the Lord and, you know, become prideful in my own eyes or, you know, a thief and wind up stealing things. But rather, I'm grateful for the things that God has brought into my life that I make use of. And if you look around, you probably can recognize that I'm making use of things that probably you might not have. You might go out and get a designer version of it. But as I told my wife, I said, you know, you kind of wait long enough. Some of these things that I improvise, you'll see that designers usually come along and they'll show you the same thing that I've been doing all along. And sometimes she agrees with me. And maybe like some of your projects, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. But the reality of using what God has given you is what we are called to do every day of our life. We're meant to be a living Bible. Our lives are meant to reflect His image because we're created in His image. So we're to be like a mirror, although not very good at it, but a mirror of what Jesus shines upon us, where the Father shines upon us as the light of the world, that He wants to bring light to other people so that we would kind of like, you know, be a Bible ourselves. Our lives would show forth the things that God is doing, not just in salvation, but in blessing you and in encouraging you and in strengthening you, in giving you mercy and grace so that you too would be merciful and loving to other people, extending grace to them where they don't deserve what you're going to give them, so you give it to them anyways because you love them, right? You know the words. Love your enemies. Bless those who despitefully use you and miserably persecute you. You know, don't chastise them. Don't fight back. Don't offer defense. But do like Jesus said, and you'll get crucified. Hey, crucified. Cool. Man, I'm looking forward to that. You know, that's my calling, to be crucified. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the will of the Son of God, and died for me, and gave himself for me. Oh, that's not my destiny. That's your destiny. <laughs> I'm here to be blessed. Uh, forget the rest. You might want to think about what your Christianity is. Because if it's all about these things that you see, even though God has blessed me, I don't think you get the point. And you may be missing what I'm trying to say. Because the reality is, I could walk away tomorrow. God said, go. And I've done it. <laughs> As the wind blows, Michael goes. And so, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is the perfect and acceptable will of God in Christ Jesus. And that perfect will really is to find out what He wants you to do, not what you want to do with what He has blessed you with. You see how that works? One way, you're asking Him. The other way, you're telling Him. So, pardon me, but in my devotionals, I like to ask Him rather than tell Him what to do. Launch out into the deep, Luke 5, 4. How deep, He does not say. The depth into which we launch will depend upon how perfectly we have given up the shore and the greatness of our need and the apprehension of our possibilities. The fish were to be found in the deep, not in the shallow water. They were getting ready to fish, and they couldn't find any fish after fishing all night. So Jesus blows their mind and says, hey, go out a little farther. And they're like, hey, you know, we're done fishing, man. I've had it. You know, I ain't going there. But old Peter, you know, he's kind of usually sticking his foot in his mouth. He says, no, oh, let's go. Come on. Let's give it one last shot. And so they launched out into the deep, and they about sunk their boat how many fish they got. So it's not about the deep that was the important part, the Lord sending them to where he wanted them. So with us, our needs are to be met in the deep things of God. We are to launch out into the deep of God's word, which the Spirit can open up to us in such 
crystal fathomless meaning that the same words we have accepted in times past will have an ocean of meaning in them, which renders their first meaning to us very shallow. In other words, I can say to you something that I'm sure you've heard a thousand times. Matter of fact, I tell people that you'll never live this, you won't believe it, and you sure won't do it, though you know the scripture by heart, and you probably practice it or sometimes change it or rearrange it and make it into what you want it to be, but in reality, what God said in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you're going to be living all your life, and no matter how many times you hear it, you're going to redo it over and over and over again because you're going to live it every single day. What is it? Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lead not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. When you don't know what to do, he'll direct. When you do know what to do, you better let him direct. Because if you acknowledge him, then he'll direct you. If you don't acknowledge him, hey, you're on your own, buddy. Guess what? You get screwed up. Whose fault was it? It isn't God's. Something bad happened. Whoa, blatant devil? No, I don't think so. I think if you were choosing to trust in the Lord with all your heart, not leaning into your own understanding, then acknowledging Him, He would direct your path. Because you see, when you do that, when you start off your day with God directing your path, you know everything is coming your way. Is it going to bless you? That's not what I'm saying. Isn't going to work out for your benefit. I'm not saying that. I'm saying God directed you so that when you're going straight at that oncoming car, as you keep asking him through the day, guess what's going to happen? He's going to say, turn to the left. There went that car by. Wow, perfect timing, Lord. Man, I wasn't sure if you were going to tell me like to walk out of air or what. Or zap me in a rapture. <laughs> that would have been snatched away for salvation, wouldn't it? Or snatched out of this existence by smashing into a car. So whether I live or whether I die, it's the Lord that would be directing. But you see, that's the difference in scripture and in devotionals and in your life. If God isn't personally directing you, then impersonally you're inventing what he's saying. See how that works? You're making yourself out to be the one who's doing it and fulfilling it by faith as opposed to having trust, which is the action of faith, in the Lord. See, faith is something that, you know, we always try to define it in all these weird terms, you know, faith is something, thanks so for evidence, not faith, it's John that I've seen, and faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So we have all these wonderful scriptures that tell us things that we really haven't a clue what the heck they mean. Because faith in, faith of, faith by, faith this, faith that. And some people want to do, you know, faith movement by, you know, naming, claiming, and getting, you know. And God may give it to you because then he doesn't owe you anything in heaven. So that faith that you thought that you were investing into what you thought that you got because you thought that it was all about faith wasn't about personal relationships. So in reality, God gave it to you only because then he's not a debtor to any man. The same man should say that he's a debtor. God gives it to you so that your heaven is here on earth rather than in heaven so you don't get any blessings from it when you get to heaven because you didn't have any faith because you wanted it all now and you didn't trust him for when it would come later. Did you get all that? That's for the faith movement. So, in reality, you know, that kind of movement isn't faith. It's just mouth. <laughs> it's kind of like moving your mouth and getting what you want because God's going to say, Hey, I love you, so I'll give it to you now, but are you sure you really want it? Are you sure? But you see, if you trust in the Lord with all your heart, Hey, whatever you want from me, God, I'm happy with it. You want to give me good? Good. If you don't want to give me the good, give me bad. Then give me whatever you're going to give me because... God, whatever you do, I trust in you. So, in that kind of way, you don't really care whether it's good or bad. You don't care if it's up or down or sideways or left or right because you've seen in your life, or maybe you haven't, but I've seen in my life how, hey, you know what, I could be going the wrong way, I think, and he makes it the right way, I know, because he works it out in the long term, I see, by way of making it all come together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And so, being called according to his purpose, he's chosen me to use my life to exemplify, that was stupid, so don't go that way. You know, so now I know, oh, you don't go that way. I tried it, didn't like it. Guess what? Go that way. <laughs> See what I mean? In other words, there's a purpose and a plan behind choosing to trust in the Lord. When you don't check out 
check in and check on what God is telling you to do daily also through the day all through the day and all through the night then you kind of like you know operating with one eye open you're kind of going uh, yeah, yeah you know my death perception oh, oh wow that's closer than I thought you smack into something because you see you need two eyes in order to have death perception try it sometime you just can't quite see the distances the right way but with two eyes you can without being a spiritual being born again in the spirit without being full of the Holy Spirit or filled with the Holy Spirit then you don't have any spiritual eyes. You can't see what's going on in the world. You're always kind of like bouncing around, kind of doing this thing, doing that thing, kind of like falling down, stumbling, you know, acting like kind of like you don't know where you're going, what you're doing, and how you're going to get there. But you try to tell everyone else you do. Well, that's kind of what we're talking about, you know. you got to check in with the source, because if you're not, then guess what? You're kind of not using the resource that God gave you, His Word, a personal relationship with him, his spirit, <laughs> your ears, your eyes, uh, your understanding. I mean, it's kind of like all back on him. So, really, it's not about you. Or, I should say, it is about you, but it's through him and not through you. So, whenever you're kind of getting into this whole vein of thinking you are smart enough to handle it on your own, I think you might want to kind of reconsider some of the things that you're maybe planning on doing. Maybe you want to talk to God about it. <gasps> maybe God does have something to say about it. Maybe it's not just about this philosophical idea of like, oh, I'm going to look it up, you know, and I'm going to find the favorite scripture, you know, that just perfectly fits because I'm going to keep researching and researching and researching and researching and I'll take this scripture from here and that scripture from there and this theology from here and that theology from there and that person that said this and that person that said that and I'm going to put it all together and stir it up in a pot and I'm going to drink it and say God excuse me what happened to Emmanuel God with us what happened to Emmanuel God in us uh, what happened to God is real <laughs> gee I don't know. Some people live religiously. And it ain't just religion, because religion is good. Don't get me wrong. I like religion. Religion points me in the right direction. But religion without relationship is just religion. <laughs> and relationship without religion is just relationship. And sometimes if your relationship is strained, and you don't know why, it could be religion will tell you why. You see, you kind of get a balance. I'm not going to put one higher than the other, but you know what? Relationship's going to lead you to religion, and religion's going to lead you to relationship. So the two merge together in a union of body, soul, and spirit. Because there's always a tripartite to what God does. It's not all up here, and it's not all in here, and it's not all out here. But it's a union of the three. Because God wants to present you body, soul, and spirit faultless before the Father with exceeding joy funny how he prayed for your whole body, soul, and spirit. Hmm. Wonder why he said that. Maybe these devotionals, you know, when they were talking about the deep things of God, maybe some of these things that we took for granted, because we learned them in Sunday school, <laughs> or we heard them, you know, Sunday church, or we read it once, you know, now we know it. Maybe there's a little more depth to it depending upon where you're at today as opposed to where you were yesterday. The deep things of God are calling out to the deep things of you. Deep call it to deep. And God will reveal to you things that you never imagined if you'll just trust Him to reveal it to you and not take it to Him with what you think is true. Because when you're telling Him what you want when you're telling him what you think, when you're telling him what he can and can't do, he just might let you go ahead and do that, according to Romans, you know. When they changed the image of the incorruptible God into the image of corruptible man, they lusted after their own flesh and kind of went after things that weren't necessarily profitable to them. And I think that God just said, okay, 
I've been trying to tell you the truth. I think I'm going to let you go your way. But if you want to come my way, I've got something to show you today. So, which way will you go? Will it be to the left? Will it be to the right? Are you going up? Or are you going down? Today, you get to make the choice. Because every step of the way that you're going, you do get to make the choice. But the choice is whether today, pardon not your heart as it says in the propagation, but today, if you hear his voice, are you listening? Are you expecting to hear his voice? Are you wanting to hear God speak? Or rather, are you telling him which way you're going instead of trusting in the Lord with all your heart and letting him tell you which way he wants you to go? Remember, the difference is you telling him or he telling you. Today, if you hear his voice, pardon not your heart, as it says in the propagation.